Hey everybody, it's John Wheatcroft here with another Sunday Q&A. We're up to week number 31 uh, with some great questions to get stuck into this week. So I'm going to uh, go easy on the theory today. I'm going to look at a few uh, technique orientated things. One of them is to do with comping rhythms. And there's a bit of a theme of threes, fives and sevens today. So we're going to look at ways of uh, using cross rhythmic phrases of three, five and seven. Uh, whilst maintaining a quarter note in the bass. Then we'll take that three, five, and seven concept and apply it to some uh, sequences, some pentatonic sequences. Uh, so we can play, uh, once again, things that go across the beat. Uh, we're also gonna look at ways of taking a simple scale, the major scale in this instance, and just by physically looking at how we place that scale on the guitar and being selective in the number of notes that we choose, how we can create some uh, quite sophisticated sound in and unusual sound in phrasing and make it feel more kind of uh, uh, finger friendly, shall we say, so that you can interject a bit of expression. Um, you can put uh, kind of almost like a pentatonic like feel to diatonic scales. Uh, before that though, I'm gonna play as usual, I'm gonna play a tune for you. So this week I've chosen the uh, perennial jazz standard, There Will Never Be Another You. Uh, so I'm going to do my uh, usual three takes and then pick the best one. So uh, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you on the other side of the tune. <laughs> Thank you. 
received a great suggestion from Sam asking me to talk a little bit more about making the major scale sound musical, ways to sort of break out of it just sounding like an exercise. So let's begin by looking at against an A major seven loop. We're just gonna spell out uh, a really simple finger in one that hopefully we all know. Um, and then we're gonna look at ways to expand. So there's our A major seven. So I'm gonna start on the A notes at the fifth fret on the E string. I'm going to play all the lower notes in the scale I can reach, in this case only one, so that's the G sharp, that gives me, and I'm going to go up to the octave, okay. then up to the next octave, then all the higher notes that I can reach, in this case it's only one again. So that means I'm always beginning and ending the scale just for references, uh, reference sake on the tonic. So I'm gonna go. So that's how I'm hearing that as an A scale. Of course, uh, the A harmony helps me out as well. So if I'm in a different location on the fretboard, say for example, I'm around the seventh fret, there's gonna be a greater range of notes on either side. So here I might start on the A, taking all the lower notes, octave and taking all the higher notes okay so before we begin with this exercise which I'm going to call scale reduction we should make sure we've got a really really strong kind of level of familiarity with all of the possible fingerings so I would suggest that you work on single string groupings so like groupings of three so like this kind of thing Repeat that on every string. Another strings. Of course, I can repeat that. Once you've explored the whole range of the guitar and you feel comfortable with the fingerings, let's now restrict our gaze to a more um, select area of the fingerboard. So we're going to imagine in the key of A, from around the 4th fret area to maybe around the 8th or ninth, maybe the ninth fret I would say. So on each string that gives us the following. So uh, we could think of this as being like 4 possible notes on a string. So on the E string we have G sharp, A, B, C sharp, so those four notes. On the A string, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. I just think of this as a pattern really, like a semitone, a tone, and a tone. And the same again on the next string. This is a good area because there's a lot of symmetry here, like these pair of strings that feel the same. And the middle two strings, we have the same thing, although it's a different pattern. We have a tone, a semitone, and a tone. A tone, and a semitone, and a tone. Things a little bit more complex on the top two strings. Yeah, let's go from the third fret. So we have a tone, a tone, and another tone. So all tones. Or, and on the top string, we have the same as on the bottom string. And we can string that together to play the whole scale. This is where we get choices. So just connecting them together in different ways. So you can see there that there are some choices available to us. Okay, so we call this the complete scale and take your pick really which which one of those fingerings you want to choose. So 
that might be the first thing is get comfortable with sort of moving between these patterns so don't get too rigidly fixed into one shape or another as the phrasing that you're playing might require you to uh, maybe for example if you were doing something where you're jumping strings um, playing something that was more based around sort of seeing the chord shape you might prefer this finger so you know the first I guess the first point is be super flexible when it comes to these fingers I haven't really got like a fixed finger for the major scale because it depends upon the phrase in fact or maybe I have, but I've got lots of them, if that makes sense. I've got more than one potential option when playing any selection of notes. So that could be the first thing, and we'll call this the complete scale. I'm going to call this section scale reduction. So let's imagine for now we're going to stick to one specific fingering, just to be, uh, to be clear. So I'm going to choose this one. So three notes. And just think about the number of notes per string. Three. Three and three. Now, conventionally, you would only play two notes on this string if you were only going to play each note once. To stay in position. And then three on the top string. But there's no reason why I can't include that note as an option. So I'm actually going to plumb for to, to give us the choice for three notes on every string. I'm going to have three on the B string. Which means doubling up. Okay, so so far there hasn't been any scale reduction, it's been the complete scale. So what I'm going to suggest is we can break this up now into two note groups. So instead of playing string I can select any two so it could be the first finger and the second or the first and third uh, sorry first and fourth forgive me the first and third notes but first and fourth finger or it could be the second and third notes which is the second and fourth finger so I have a bunch of choices there one two or three and that follows onto every string. So I could choose, for example, I'm going to choose these two notes on this next string instead of playing all three. I'm going to play just two notes again, or maybe I'll pick these two. Okay. On this next string, I'll choose two notes. I'll choose those two. And I'll create an arpeggio. In this instance, I'm thinking just purely physically, rather than not even necessarily thinking, you know, the seven and the root, the three and the five, the six and the seven. Although, of course, you know, you can think that way. But for now, let's just think physical, physicality. Which two notes do you want? And then the next thing, maybe I'll pick these two. And on the next string, well, which two do I want? Do I want, or maybe I'll pick those two. Do you see what I'm doing? So let me just turn this off for a sec. So instead of the complete scale, I've formed a two note per string pattern that feels rather like a pentatonic scale, but isn't necessarily uh, restricted to just those notes. In fact, we've got different notes in each octave here. So here I've got, if we want the, uh, the theory, which I'll go light on, I've picked the seven and the root, but I didn't have to, I could pick anything. Okay, so I just chose those two notes. On the next string, I chose the three and the five. Although you could go, if you wish. There's no problem doing that, but let's pump for three and five. 
On the next string, I chose these two physical notes. Give me the six and the seven. So I choose to miss the octave out, and then I go two to three. And in this string, I chose five and six. Although I could have gone, well, maybe I wouldn't choose the three again, because we, oh, the fact that, yeah. I could put the four in, yeah, I could put the four in. I could go. That would be fine, yeah, that'd be cool. So yeah, yeah, I could do that, I could put the four in. Or maybe you're making things a little bit tricky from a technical perspective there. The five feels a little bit easier. But you've got some choices available to you. So now instead of the whole scale, what I'm left with, I played seven an octave on the top string. Uh, yeah, so that's the top string. So the whole scale now, or my selection of notes from it is feels like a pentatonic. So all the patterns that you know from pentatonic scale, sequences and the like, you know, things like, you know, major pentatonic, you might go. And we're going to plug some interesting sequences into a uh, pentatonic scale a little bit later on today. I could play the exact same thing now with. You know, things like. That would be. kind of bouncy the kind of things that you play with pentatonic are all plausible now within this scale now of course just because I've chosen this two note pathway doesn't mean I'm restricted to it So that gives us this kind of sound. Once you feel comfortable with the concept of breaking the scale into two note groupings, you should explore moving along the length of each string so along with playing in position, that kind of thing, you could do things like this, like along a single string, so whether it be a stretch, you know, in this case the third, or whether it be pairs of strings that kind of thing okay so then we can break it down even further so instead of playing three or two how about one those kind of things So again, again, start a loop. I'll just pick one note. So maybe I'll pick the A. I'll pick the E. I'll pick F sharp and B. And maybe, maybe C sharp. And then E and B. We've got uh, consecutive fifths there. Or I could play a line in perfect fourths. So this is just picking one note on each string. So try and move across the scale in an improvised way. You don't necessarily have to choose until the moment that you play that note. So I might go...
You can mix ones with twos. So there what I did is I played one note on the E string, two notes on the A, one note on the D string, two notes uh, on the G, and same on the B and the E. These move in octaves really nicely. So you could go uh, the E and A strings, then move to the next octave and play the exact same pattern, and then two strings. Once you're familiar with the concept of being selective which notes you choose, then of course you can mix this up. So you could, uh, you could go any different combination that you feel like. So you might go three and one, three and one perhaps. Pick a note on this string, then pick a note on this string, or you might go uh, two and one. That would be a nice one to go two, one. That kind of idea, or just kind of mix it up as you go. You know. So I'm just going to kind of freely play with the major scale, and maybe even for this instance, I'll just stick to this fingering. restricted to the major scale I'm just using the major scale here as a teaching device really uh, this is how players like John Schofield can take scales like uh, the altered scale or the half whole and play it like it's a pentatonic so you can do this by removing notes taking something that would normally have three or maybe more notes on a string reduce it down to just pick a selection of two and then it feels like a pentatonic scale even though the note selection might be anything but. So that's something that you should explore. So I'm just gonna end by showing you a very uh, simple but really effective lick based on the playing of Adrian Moyard, who's an amazing uh, young French guitar player. You should definitely check him out. So, so this is a lick that's gonna uh, come from the concept of mainly just one note on a string, but in the middle of the guitar, we're gonna introduce two. So it's really a kind of chord shape type of idea here. So in the key of A, against this chord, like an A with an added nine, we're gonna play one note, one, one, and then on the G string, two notes, and then one, two. So root, root, fifth, nine, three, four. four. Once you're familiar with the initial pattern, then you should look to move it throughout the scale, moving each note uh, along one diatonically. That's gonna give us the following seven shapes. So this is an A major with an added second and an added four. B minor, again with an added second, there it is, and the other four, then a C sharp minor, this time with a flat second, because it's C sharp and D, not C sharp and D sharp, it's C sharp and D. Okay, then we've got a D with an added raised four, and a nine of course. Then E with an added four, that's the same shape as our initial A, which I'm supposed to E. Okay, and then we've got an F sharp. I'll go down an octave. So slow. 
So I'm hammering that note on. In that case, I picked it. So you can hammer it, or you can pick it. Okay. Then from the G sharp, we've got this kind of slightly strange pattern. It's not so bad in the lower octaves because you've got flat five and a flat nine. So that translates here. But we have to move back a fret. It's slightly awkward, and then back to A. Now these can all be played against our A groove. So we have. Weird one. I had a great question from Andy about pentatonic phrasing and about using uh, uh, using certain note groupings to create phrases that go over the beat line. So what I'm going to do is we're going to now shift key to a kind of C7 raise nine type scenario. And every idea now is going to come straight out of C minor pentatonic scale. Bear in mind that everything that I do here, you could do with these two note per string patterns that you could derive from the major scale or any other scale. It doesn't necessarily have to be pentatonic. I'm just using this as a teaching device. So I'm sure we're all familiar with this pattern. Two note per string thing at the eighth fret. So our loop now is changed to C7 sharp nine. Okay. So first off, we're gonna just define some simple phrases. Phrases of two, three, and four. So we can go ascending in threes. So maybe I'll go from the third from top note and go up three. Then from the next note up three, and so on. I'm going to play everything today in semiquavers, 16th notes. So this is a three note phrase, but grouped in four. So meaning the rate is four. There's four things happen in every beat. One E and a, two E and a. And I'm going to be going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So it goes across the beat line. So remember that, because that's something we're going to look at with a chord idea in a moment. So that's going to be this. Now you can pick them, or you can hammer them. Like so. We could also do twos. I'll do this half speed actually to begin with. So two could be this. So I'm going from the second from highest note up two, then from the next note up two and so on. And again, for the purposes of today, they're all going to start on beat one. We can move them around, uh, of course, and play them from different points in the beat. That's not a problem, but we're just for simplicity's sake, we're just going to start everything from beat one. So we've got half time twos, well, it's like quarter time, I suppose. Half time. scale but my group of three is descending okay and that's that sound okay. so these things I'm hoping are all fairly sort of you know, uh, fairly simple uh, of course we've got groups of four and that's gonna sound like So they're, hopefully they're all fairly sort of uh, standard 
phrase and ideas that you can do when you're playing pentatonic scales. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to combine them to create uh, odd numbers of notes. Let's start by adding a three note idea to a two note idea to give us a pattern of five. Okay, so we'll do this. We'll go ascend three and then ascend two. And then we move that to the next group of strings. And so on. So what that's going to do is that's going to create a phrase of five moving through a rate of four. So it's going to move across the beat line. So here's our rhythm. So I'll do this half time. Beginning. So it's going to go one, two, three, one, two, 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 like so across the beat line. Okay. If you were using uh, conical, that would be taki ta taka taki ta taka. They would have a syllabic representation for each rhythm. It's really great. I would urge you to check conical out. Maybe it's something we could look at. Certainly, the basics of it uh, in one of our further sessions. So that's going to sound like this one, two, three, half time. So it's across the beat now. It's going to freeze on the top two strings. Interesting rhythmic uh, idea there. So that's that's the the ascending through the scale, but descending through each uh, portion of the phrase. Slow. Here's the two. Here's the three. Here's the two. Three. Two. Three. Two. A little bit quicker. direction if we can create a group of five by adding together a three and a two then of course we can create a group of seven by adding together a four and a three so again with the loop, let's remind ourselves of what they sound like independently. So the four is going to be this, I'll do it at half time. Here I've chosen to go descending, I'll do descending three. So now I've decided, and you can change this as you see fit, I've decided to do a four followed by a three. So that's going to give me this. Which in conical would be taka demi takita, taka demi takita. So it's, it's like as if I'm going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 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 one. And every seventh beat we're going to land back on the one. So let's move this through the scale. I'll do it slow. There's the pattern starts again. Now. So actually, the string change is where the pattern starts again. So it should be fairly easy to follow. It feels a little bit uh, nicer, faster actually. So here we go, double that to speed. Hope 
that's making sense. Of course, you can always freeze and go. So there's go. I had a great suggestion from Harry to look at some fingerstyle uh, rhythmic ideas. And I'm gonna combine this with this concept of creating odd number groupings by uh, combining simple ideas, twos and threes and so on. Uh, I think it's also fair and important to shout out to uh, Jonathan Kreisberg, who did an absolutely fantastic masterclass session. I think it's on my music masterclasses about polyrhythmic guitar. And he touches on very similar ideas to the kind of thing I'm about to show you now. So I suggest that you check that out, it's really great. Okay, so we could take uh, an idea where in the, uh, the bass we're gonna play quarter notes. So we're just gonna go one, two, three, four. And in the treble, we could play groupings of things like threes. So three against four is gonna sound like this. One, two, three. So we have three beats, one, two, three, one. On the fourth beat, they coincide. Let's go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's what's happening there. So it's going across the beat. Now every twelfth note, the uh, those two events are going to collide. Uh, so if we were in four, four, that means on we have three beats: one, two, three, four. So even that's a displacement. So it kind of puts us in three, four. If we want each time, uh, each time it comes around, we want that to be on beat one. We'd need to be in three, four. Okay, so what happens is, if I play this as a chord pattern, it's kind of displaces it across the bar line. So maybe I'll choose D minus seven, and we're gonna get this idea. Again, I'm starting on beat one, we can displace that even, but for now, we're just gonna keep it on beat one. Now what we could do is we could move the bass note between the root and five. Now that means every sixth beat, because of course we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's when it's gonna collide now. Notice it's on the A string, then it's on the E string. It's like a kind of a question and answer opposing rhythm. So I put it through a two five one. something that we can look at. We'll develop this in future weeks. <clears throat> um, so then I'm putting that through a sequence. So then we could do a pattern of five by combining a two and a three, and that's gonna be this rhythm. Again, we can put that through a sequence. between root and five, or in this case, I'm going between the root and flat five. So, so that's creating a, a cycle of five. Uh, seven could be one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. That kind of thing, so two twos, and a three, that's this rhythm. Our chord. And 
again, that could be put through the sequence. And so on, yeah. So I'm hoping that these things um, are going to help you to unlock certain uh, cross rhythmic phrases that are very interesting to listen to rather than things that always repeat on the downbeat. So just to recap here, what we've got is a sequence of three. One, two, three, 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 that kind of thing. Uh, or a sequence of five. You can also flip it around, put the five in the bass, you know, but maybe that's a subject for another day. And a seven, which is one, two, one, two, one, two, three. there's no reason why it needs to be one two one two one two three it could be one two one two three one two one two one two three one two or the three could come first or whatever you can play around with these things and that's what I suggest you do is that you play around with them it's going to give you some interesting uh, and unique rhythmic phrasing as well the other thing that you can do if say you're choosing a rhythmic phrase that just keeps overlapping you know you're thinking of something that just keeps overlapping you can always have a kind of like balancing out rhythm at the end you know, like hotel california which is cascading threes it's going one two three 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 four so that little four at the end is what makes it fit into the bar i hope you found something useful from this week's session uh, thanks for making it so far uh, as always comments likes shares are always greatly appreciated so please tell your friends uh, allow us to spread the word if you've got any questions that you'd like me to address, or maybe even a tune that you'd like me to have a crack at, uh, any requests, I'm more than happy to, uh, to throw them into the pot. So you can contact me in the comments section, or you can email me at john at johnweecroftguitar.com. Uh, I hope you're staying safe and that the lockdown measures are not affecting you too dramatically. Uh, I'll see you next week, uh, which will be after Christmas. So I'm also going to wish you a very, very happy Christmas and holiday. Um, yeah, keep practicing. Uh, let's make this as productive as we can. I know it's not perfect circumstances with lockdown and whatnot, but we have to stay positive and we have to stay safe. So take care. I'll see you next week.